Welcome back to my channel. Glad you could join me today. Now, I'm near Dolly's Rocks at a place called The Lagoon, and you can see on the video here, I'm actually videotaping this nice spoonbill. It's the only bird here that is not moving. Now, today I want to talk about the Nikon D500 and high ISO. Now, quite a few people use the Nikon D500 with a long telephoto lens, like the Nikon 200 to 500 mil at 500 mil to get a lot of reach because you're getting 1.5 times the reach compared to a full frame camera. But I see quite a few posts on the Nikon D500 Facebook group and other groups related to the Nikon D500 that this camera is woeful at high ISO. Well, it isn't. It is very good. What people don't realize is that the higher the ISO you go, you are going to get a bit of noise there. But the main problem that people are encountering is that they're cropping and they're cropping a lot. Now, if you're shooting at around ISO 200 to ISO 640, you're not going to get too much noise when you start cropping. But the problem comes when you start climbing in ISO. Let's say you're getting to ISO 1600, ISO 2500, ISO 3200, ISO 6400, and so on. You're getting into the high ISOs. Once you pass ISO 2000, you're going to induce a bit of noise in your photos. That's just a matter of fact. If you don't crop a lot, if the bird's quite close, that's not going to be such a problem. But if your subject, like this spoonbill here, it is a good 70 odd meters away. So I'm going to have to crop a bit. If it is a smaller bird, then I might have to crop more. And this is where you have to be very careful because the more you crop, the more that noise that's in your photo is going to show up. It's just a matter of fact. And this is what people don't realize that they go like, oh, you know, like, there's not much noise here. But once they start cropping the image, they go like, oh, this camera is woeful. Look at all the noise. It's not the camera. You could try any camera and do the same test and you will find that the more you crop, the more noise that you're going to get, especially the higher the ISO you go. Because when we're shooting wildlife, it's very rare that we're shooting at a very low shutter speed. My minimum shutter speed for wildlife is 1 400th of a second. That is for stationary subjects. But if I think that, let's say an egret or this spoonbill here might take off, I might set a shutter speed of two and a half thousandths of a second. Now the other day, I was just down the road here at Osprey House and we had an Osprey and we had a couple of seagulls go past and my shutter speed was between two and a half thousandths of a second and three thousand two hundredth of a second. I know that my ISO is going to be quite high because the way I set up my camera very quickly is I shoot in manual mode. I have the auto ISO, I set my aperture, it's normally fixed at f5.6 and then I just let the ISO run its course. If I set my camera at 1,000th of a second, I might only have an ISO of 400. But if I crank it up to 2.5 thousandths of a second, that ISO might jump up to 1,200 or 1,600. Just depends on the conditions. It's a very bright day today. I've had to wait till nearly five o'clock to do this video because I wanted low light to actually show what the photos look like when we're climbing in high ISO. Let's take some photos now and I will show you what I mean. You can see I'm fully extended at 500 mil. Now, remember I said I normally shoot at f5.6. The reason I'm adjusting my f-stop today is just so that we can climb that ISO range. So it's showing me at 1 400th of a second, I am at ISO 400. We'll focus on the bird, take a photo. You can see ISO 320. Watch what happens as I adjust my shutter speed. I'll leave it at f8, but from 400, I'll just keep adjusting it and I'll tell you the adjustments I do and you'll see the photos. Remember, we're 1 400th of a second, take a photo. We've gone to 1,000th of a second, 2,000th second, 3,200th of a second, and we'll stop at 5,000th of a second. Now, I never get to 5,000th of a second. What I will do now, and I will show you as I crop in, I'll just select a few photos and I'll put the ISO range full frame and then cropped in at 100%. And you will see the difference in noise.
And this is why I'm trying to explain that the further the bird is away from you, the less you can crop, especially if it's a small kingfisher and all that. If it's a bird that I haven't seen before, I will crop in. I won't worry about the ISO because it'll just be a reference photo. But if you're really wanting a great photo, then be careful of the ISO you use and also of how much you crop. We we're just talking about the fast shutter speed, but if something isn't moving too much, I mainly shoot wildlife. Now let's say if you're shooting soccer or football for overseas people, you might only need to use a shutter speed of 1,000th of a second. But if you set your shutter speed to 1,200th of a second, saying, oh, I really want to freeze frame that, then expect that your ISO is going to increase. And also expect that if you crop, then you're going to see that noise a lot. I'm not one for pixel peeping. I know some people like pixel peeping. Some people I see, they show a photo and they say, this is what it looked like. And they crop in around 200% and they go like, look at this, look how much noise they're in. Well, that's pixel peeping and you're saying, well, you're going to get that, but are you going to see that in the final photo? Especially if you're not gonna crop. If you've got a nicely framed subject, you go like, well, I don't need to crop it, it's great. And then you decide to zoom in to 200% and you go like, but look at that noise. Nobody's going to see that noise because you're not cropping. Even if you cropped a certain amount, it looks good like that at 100%. Then there's no need to go further than 100% because nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to stand there with a magnifying glass and go like, oh, yes, I can really see that noise. And this is what some people do. Because some people, when they start out using the D500, they just think, okay, well, people are raving that this is a great camera and so on. Then they buy it. They go out and they start using it at a very fast shutter speed. And then they start zooming in and go like, look at all this noise, this camera is terrible. It's not the camera that's terrible. It's, you've got to realize that the higher the ISO you go, the less you're going to be able to crop in. I normally set my ISO range in my camera between ISO 100 and ISO 4000. If it climbs higher than ISO 2500, I know that I'm going to expect some noise. I know that if I start cropping, I'm going to see noise there. Now in editing, in Lightroom, I can reduce some of that background noise, but I'm still going to get noise there. So I'm very careful about the ISO that I'm using. Late in the day sometimes, at this time of the day, and if the bird is in the shade, then I know that I'm going to have high ISO, but then I've got to pay very good attention to the shutter speed I need. And this is something that you've also got to remember. Don't just complain about higher ISO. Look at what your camera settings are. Look at what the f-stop is. Do you need f8 or do you need f11? I was talking to a guy just a couple of weeks ago at Lake Eden and he said, oh, I shoot all my wildlife at f11 so I get great depth of field. I said, well, why do you need f11? I shoot at f5.6 and I get great photos. Even if you drop from f11 to f8, you're going to reduce your ISO. You're going to end up with better photos and your shutter speed. If your bird, like this spoonbill here, is stationary, do you really need to shoot at one thousandth of a second? If it's just standing still? No. You could reduce your shutter speed, especially if you're on a tripod. Today I'm using a gimbal just because I don't want the photos to change. And most of the time I'm just hand holding and I'm shooting at around 400th of a second or 500th of a second. That way I know that I'm keeping my ISO down. I've got the best chance at getting great photos. So I hope you understand now that it's not ISO that is a killer. It is how you crop the image. The more you crop, the worse your photos get. Try not to crop too much. Pay attention to the aperture you use. Do you need that certain aperture that you're using? Also pay attention to the shutter speed you use. Do you need that shutter speed? Do you need 2,000 of a second? If there's a stationary bird, you could come down to 1 500th of a second and you're still going to get a very sharp photo. Thanks for watching. If this video has been of help to you, give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. It really helps me out. Stay safe, enjoy photography, enjoy using your Nikon D500 because it is a great camera. And I'll see you next time.